Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'll take you through a complete guide to researching in Photoshop a voiceover. A voiceover by yours truly, the Joey Dutch. So, this video, I'll be talking about the process I went through, frequency separation, dodging and bending, teeth and eye whitening, um, skin toning, adding textures to your images, and probably sharpening your textures, and my export settings in Lightroom or sometimes in Capture One, but in this video I used Lightroom in exporting my settings to explain the PPI and the resolution and all that. So without much ado, please don't fast forward this video because I've already fast forwarded some parts of the video. And if you have any problems, leave your comments down below. And probably if you haven't subscribed, do subscribe and turn on the notification button so that you receive each and every video I put up. So to every retouching, you would obviously have to create a new layer by holding Ctrl or Command J on the keyboard. So I renamed the layer into Healing because we'll probably be taking out a whole lot of blemishes in this image. It's really, really going to take a lot of time because I took my time taking out each and every blemish you probably might see in this image. In my previous tutorial, I spoke about the ways I use in taking out blemishes in my image. And this is one of them using the healing brush too, not the spot healing, but the healing brush too. Um, so if you haven't watched my earlier video on how to take up blemishes, the link will be down in the description or I'll just put it right in this video for you guys to go check it out. I suggest the link for you guys. You go watch out what processes I use in taking up blemishes, which probably I'm using one of the processes though. So. I sample, then I clean with the spot in a healing brush too. The healing brush too works similarly to the clone stamp too, but in a different way. If you want to find out the different ways, or if you want to know the difference between the clone stamp too and the healing brush too, do check out the video. Like I really, really want you to go check it out so that you would non destructively take out blemishes whenever you are retouching your images. As you can see, I am carefully taking out each and every blemish I don't want in the image. And obviously, I would probably zoom in and zoom out at some instances. And take note, don't sample anywhere far away from what you are trying to cleanse. Sample almost close to where the blemish is and take it out. I forgot to mention and if you are retouching and you started with cleaning or healing when you do it right with a perfect skin models with really really good skin and all that you would obviously get to find out that even without applying frequent separation or dodging the melon or skin tone you would obviously get a really good image depending on how good you clean your images I know a couple of photographers who just don't use frequency separation but they use this healing and dodging and bending to retouch their images i'm trying to learn to get to that level but for now we'll probably use our healing and frequency separation this is really going to take a lot of time because i remember taking a whole bunch of time trying to fix this taking it near to perfection um, this image was more or less a collaboration with a concept I saw earlier on I think Pinterest or probably Instagram I, I get most of my inspiration from Instagram so the search button do follow great people and you get to see what will inspire you to create obviously no one creates something new if someone creates something new, it's more like one in a billion photographer bro any photographer creating the content is probably a better version of what he or she saw online the model i used for this 
shoot it's Rosalyn Ashka I'll leave a link down in the description you guys can check it out she's a really great model you can hit her for shoot too if you want to shoot her and makeup uh, flawless makeup like this is one of the best editorial makeup I've seen so far with the makeup artists I've worked with and guys always get a good makeup artist to work with so that your job will become very easy for you all you need to do is just fix some simple patches and you're good to go with a retouching but if you get a bad makeup artist and with bad makeup come on you get to fix a lot i'll probably make a video where i talk about how or what i went through editing a particular bad image with bad makeup probably done by the model but that's not what we are doing today we are talking about how to retouch this image to look like what i posted earlier on my instagram handle Oh, sorry, I didn't mention the makeup artist's name. She has Riri's makeover. I'll leave a link down in the description and you can also check it out. She's really good. And I'll also leave a link of the studio I showed this in. This is a one light studio session where I use a deep 7 feet octa, a parabolic, undiffused though, to way above the model's head, a reflector we need uh, to we need a face to at least fill in some shadows and i got us 8600 bm at flash power 1 over 8 i shot this with a canon 6d 100 millimeter macro l usm lens f 2.8 this was shot at f 12 f 11 f yeah f 11 f 11 rather was shot at f 11 and an ISO of 100 with my white balance at 5200 and yeah that's basically it so after I'm done with the retouch I'll put um, the before close to the after for you guys to see how this works but if you want to check it out even before I finish this retouching you can go to my Instagram handle which I also leave a link down in the description below for you guys to check the image out that will, that, that will be my latest post i think so do check it out and see the transformation from before photoshop and after photoshop So this is the part I use the clone sound tool, which is S on the keyboard, to select the clone sound tool. Use to clean the hair strands around the hair. And although the hair is not as perfect, I would obviously fix that using the liquify tool, which will come up very soon. 
and be careful when you're using the clone stamp too it can really destroy your images and it can also help you fix your images like how it's helping me fix my image so if you want to learn more about clone stamp tools do type on um, youtube how to use a clone stamp tool because i myself i'm trying to perfect how to use a clone stamp tool this is a beauty editorial so this image should be close to being perfect all the time on a normal i will just leave all these things there but as i'm aiming towards beauty editorial i have to fix everything that seems to be imperfect there So when I'm here using the liquify now, you can hold Ctrl Shift X on the keyboard to bring up the liquify toolbar, or you can go to filter and liquify. And I'm trying to fix the hair patches where I saw some dents. I fixed them where so that it will be even out. Next thing, I would want to fix the background because I can see some blemishes in the background. For that, I use my quick selection tool, which is W on the keyboard, to select the background and max it out. Looking at the selection, it was too sharp. So, to make it soft, I use the selector mask to soften the edges by masking the edges out. In earlier versions of Photoshop, I think it's more of refined mask. I think in C6 or 2015, whichever Photoshop you're using, it's either refined mask or selected mask. So after selecting the background, I go back to the healing and duplicate it because you, whatever we did should be on the healing. The fixing we did is supposed to be on the healing, not on the background. And looking at what I'm doing, I sent the subject up and the background below. In the sense that whatever I'll do on the background would probably be seen behind the subject. If the background was up and I applied the Gaussian blur on the background, you wouldn't get to see it as nice as you're seeing right now. So I added some Gaussian blur to the background, probably 60. And with that, after adding Gaussian blur to the background, you get to see some circles as a result of the application of Gaussian blur. When you're done with that, add some noise to it to clear up those kind of circles you see there for you to get a perfectly looking background. So I merged the background and from here I just went straight to frequency separation. The frequency separation action I mentioned earlier in my videos that I got from my factory. I'm not going to leave a link down below for you guys to go download. You guys go could probably search it up on Google and download it yourself. In frequency separation, I start I start using my mixer brush to what brush settings at what's thirty low thirty mix doesn't matter because you're not mixing any colors and a flow of ten. The flow determines how many brush strokes you'd have to apply at a particular part of the image to fix your skin. I want to apply more and more and more at a particular side, so I keep my flow at 10. You can choose to keep it at 30, 30, 30, 30, and you're good to go. So all depends on what you want and how you how fast you want the retouching process to be like. 
I should have explained my Gaussian blur. I chose a Gaussian blur of 20 because I wanted to keep everything as natural as possible and the textures to remain the same. So when I'm using a mixer brush too, I won't get to see so much a difference when I apply it. As I could have used 10 or 5, probably some photographers I know use 4 when retouching close-up images like this. I have no reason to understand why they use the bar. From what I learned, close-up images and keeping it natural, you'd have to use a high-up Gaussian blur. Oh, I'm not perfect, so I would probably say whatever Gaussian blur works for you, use it. But if you would want to edit the way I edit or follow the processes I follow, when it's really a close-up, use higher Gaussian blurs. And when they are far away, it's a full body portrait. I think lower Gaussian blurs will help. But using a mixer brush to you realize I'm keeping my highlights in my highlights and my shadows in my shadows. And only when necessary, I pull either the highlights or the shadows into any of them to fix it. So the concept behind using Gaussian Blur is sorry, the mixer brush too, with my understanding, is trying to fix the lighting which is on the subject. You understand? fixing the light and not the makeup not smoothing out it's trying to fix the lighting trying to fix the lighting i repeat again trying to fix the lighting on the image so if it is keeping the highlights in the highlight i do that if it's keeping the shadows in the shadows i do that mid-tones i do that that's the whole concept and if you realize i have a check layer up there the check layer is as a result of the action i played so you can download the action from fx3 it's free the last time i downloaded it so the check layer helps me to retouch letting me know if i have blended the image well or not i think i'll do an in-depth video on how to use the check layer some people don't use the check layer but it really helps it helps in dodging and bending it helps in frequency separation and sometimes it helps in skin toning So you realize I have switched to using the lasso tool with a feather of 10. I try to blend the skin more. I used the Gaussian blur of 18 instead of 20 because I wanted the smoothening process. This is where I smoothen the skin. With the mixer brush tool, I fix the tones, the lighting on the skin. With the lasso tool, I smoothen the skin out. So notice the difference. I smooth in the highlights, I smooth in the shadows, and I smooth in the mid-tones. You realize I don't circle the whole image and smooth in it, but I circle patches so that I fix the lighting setup at each and particular part of the face. If you're looking at retouching images close to perfection, you'd really have to get a whole lot of ample time on your hand to do it. And it's always best to get a Wacom tablet or a graphics tablet. Sorry, graphics tablet comes with different models. There's the Wacom, there's Xeon, there's hmm, there's another version called G something. I saw a friend use that. So whichever graphics tablet works for you, do get it. And if you don't have the money to get a graphics tablet, stick to your mouse. I know you can use a mouse to edit something like this. But graphics tablet makes it faster. Now I'm using the clone stamp to on my high frequency edits. Using the clone stamp to on the high frequency edits non destructively helps to heal your image. So I'm more or less healing the image using the frequency separation layer. If you want more information on how to use the clone stamp to for healing, do check out my video on removing blemishes from an image.
the trick to removing blemishes from an image is all about what sits right to your eye and what doesn't sit right with your eye. You realize I keep on zooming in and zooming out, right? It helps me figure out which part of my skin has a blemish I want to take out and which part I would probably like to keep. You can also use the patch tool on the high frequency edit the same way as you use a patch tool on a normal layer. But this time around, I'm not sure it takes out um, whatever you're healing. It obviously takes the texture from wherever you sampled and tries to bring out, like tries to replace the texture with the parts you sent the sampling to. I hope I'm making sense. If I'm not, do check out my video on how to use these tools in taking out blemishes. From here, I will try to dodge and bend. And I'm going to split the screen into two where one part of the screen is zoomed in and the other part is zoomed out. Because we're dodging and bend, and if I zoom in too much and I try fixing the image, by the time I zoom out, I'll probably be facing a totally different image from before. This is a trick splitting the screen into two is a trick I learned on YouTube from Pixel Velvet so you guys can go check him out on how to do this but if not you can literally slow down the video and look at the processes I went through trying to split the screen so with my androgen and bending action I already created using curves um, I want to release a video on how I created it but I think I already have and my earlier days when I started using and I started creating content for YouTube, so you can go check that one out on how I created this dodge and bend layer. As you can see, there's a folder named micro dodge and bend, and I can promise you that is probably the whole reason why this video is a very long ass video because it's all about micro dodging and bending. And if you're into retouching, I advise you learn how to micro dodge and bend because it really helps so if you look at what i'm doing right now taking a look at what i'm doing on the left side you could probably see the effects happen on the right side and i'm carefully taking out the blemishes should i say blemishes the dark spots that don't sit right with my eye that is the whole point of micro dodging and bending as you can see, I did a quick before and after. So you use the pen to touch. Sorry. I think that this is a trick. This is a trick to micro dodging and bending. Micro dodging and bending. On the dodge tool, you touch the shadows and you bend the highlights, which ever doesn't sit right with your eye. Not necessarily bending out the highlight there are some small patches in the skin where when you bend makes the image look perfect that is the whole concept behind micro dodging and bending i call micro dodging and bending skin matching as you can see dodge skin matching that is what i call micro dodging and bending but the correct term which is micro dodging and bending if you want to learn more on micro dodging and bending i urge you to check on youtube because it's it's really really a long video and you'd have to sit and understand the concepts behind it but cool trick is you dodge your shadows and you burn your highlights 
the whole concept behind micro dodging and burning. So you can see in the before and after of using micro dodging and burning, it really helps to fix your image. I can literally stop here and not do any global dodging burn or no contouring and I'll be good to go because my image is close to perfection now and obviously this is what some people settle for. But to take it a bit more further, we'll just do the global dodging burning and contouring and I'll be good to go. So with the global dodging burn, we use a brush flow of 3 and a opacity of 100. And I'll then change the blending mode of the help layer to multiply. And as you can see, it brings out where I should 
band and where I should dodge. Really helpful, really, really helpful, right? So, all I'll do is just dodge the highlights, like you can see in the image, some around the forehead, the line between the nose, the chin, some around the lips and the chin and the white lining around the eye too and obviously I would bend around where there are shadow areas so this is so clear that you don't have to stress enough when you're dodging and bending when you're globally dodging and bending Sometimes to help yourself whilst you're dodging the many and where to keep the image as natural as possible like how you saw it from the camera. Turn off your frequency separation layer and trust me you would love the results whilst you're dodging the many globally. As you guys can see, I duplicated the bend layer. Reason being, I don't want to go over the same process I went over when I was bending the image. So I duplicated it and reduced the opacity to get more of the bend in there. The moment I try using my brush to go over what I did in the bend again, I get to have some parts being more bent than the other. I hope I'm making sense.
the contour line, I'll be using blend ifs to contour the image where I change the blending mode of the, the first layer to screen, double tap on the layer and it brings out this layer as well. And to follow the processes I went through trying to fix the highlights in the highlights. I have a video on this, you can go check it out too. A video on dodging and blending. Two ways. I just did one way, which is a blend if. So there are several ways of dodging and bending. There's micro, there's global, and there's contouring. Contouring is the easiest way to go about dodging and bending your image. fix the eyes, whiten the eyes and if possible any projections on the teeth are whiten the teeth too. I have an action created for that. I just tap on the action and the place and I get all the adjustments later after. But if we are to go into the folder of my eye whitening, that's more of a huge saturation layer, um, a photo filter with the blue option and curves as you can see. Grading this image, I'll be using just selective colors to grade it because the skin looks perfect from a perfectly done makeup. It matches that of her lower parts of the skin. So I'm not really going to do anything around skin toning, trying to match face to skin or hand. 
but I'm just going to create the image using selective colors. So do watch what I do. I play around with the colors and I end up getting what I get or what sits right with my eye and I'm good to go. So I'll be using a couple of selective color layer adjustments and one photo filter to so do enjoy and learn. So sorry about learning. Right about now, I'm trying to add texture to the skin, so I duplicated the high frequency edit, changed it from normal to soft light, and already is adding some kind of texture, not too dramatic, but uh, more or less bring some halo suppression to the image, where you get to see the distinctive change from the image. So with that, I'll mask it to just affect the skin and only the skin, and I copy the max from. The photo filter 
this kind of masking I taught in one of my videos so I think you guys have to go check it out this is in one of my skin toning images from way earlier when I started YouTube and with the mask it masked the lips and the eyes I don't want any of them to be having the kind of texture it's just the skin I want and the skin only so I mask out the lips with a black color black brush on a white mask you know what it does it hides whatever adjustment you've done so I paint black on white paint out this section too I'm done. I merge visible by holding Ctrl, Alt, Shift, and E. I create a duplicate of all I've done. Change the blending mode to soft light. I add a black and white adjustment layer to the layer by going to Image Adjustments Black and White. click OK and I go back to image adjustments brightness and contrast and take away the contrast then I sharpen my image by adding high pass to it at the radius of 0.5 oh. so this sharpens the whole image adding textures and sharpening are two different things so do note the difference so we are i think we are done here in photoshop i'll send you guys to lightroom very soon and show you my export settings whenever i'm trying to export an image i've already fixed in photoshop so Control S to save and you go back to Lightroom or whichever, if it is Capture One, you get to see the saved image there as TIFF file. So, as you can see, we are in Lightroom comparing the before as the camera raw, straight out of camera, to what we did after Photoshop. When I come to Lightroom, I kind of like adding greens to my image. Greens kind of soften the color differences between shadows and highlights and also helps to blend your midtones. Really, really helps. I find out very... I find it, I find it very interesting to add greens to your pictures. I don't add too much as it might make the picture look too noisy so a little bit grain just to fix it and my export settings I export I create put it in a subfolder she's Rosalind I named the Rosalind the file name however you want to name it the quality at 7100 and my PPI or resolution at 300 this is how I get to export my image and Lightroom no sharpening for screen, no other watermarks and exports. We are done. So, thanks guys for watching this video. And do subscribe if you haven't. And turn on the notification button to, to keep an eye out for my next video. So, until the next video, goodbye.